I realized that there's a far more obvious way to look at this story and most people, almost everyone is missing this part from the story, but it has a great teaching, a great lesson to it about training one's own body, about developing a human strength in one's own body. What is this uh, underlying thing that we are not seeing that is just obvious to our, our eyes? So I will now tell you a story of the great Milo of Croton, who is an actual historic person from the ancient Greek. He lived in the city called Croton and he was a wrestler, kind of like a strongman of that times. He was a, like multiple times, maybe six times Olympic wrestling champion of those times. And there is this mythical story that is maybe not the most accurate historically, but this is what goes around. And I think some, a lot of people also are familiar with this story, but I'm sure there are also people who do not know the story of Milo of Croton and how he built his strength for this Olympic Games. So I will now go through it with this example here of these bags. Milo, you know, in his village where he was living within this city, he was maybe thinking to this here, okay, how do I just intuitively, how do I increase my strength? And he saw a bull, like a baby bull, like a calf somewhere laying around, which is probably quite a small creature at that time when it's just a baby. And he thought, okay, I'm gonna start carrying this bull and I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry it until it grows to be actually an adult ox, like a real, like a big bull. As an example, just here, we have a 10 kilo bag, it's around like uh, 22 pounds. So let's say the bull weighted 10 kilos or 20 pounds in the beginning. So the Milo took it on his shoulder, maybe behind the back like that way. I'm not sure about the exact techniques. He was carrying it around in the village, uh, throughout the streets, maybe uphill, downhill. That was the first month. On the second month, of course, the bull, it grows naturally. And now it's reached the weight of uh, 15 kilos, which is over 30 pounds. And again, Milo is carrying it. And as the bull keeps growing in weight, so does the strength and of course the size of Milo as well. So another month or another year comes and now the bull weighs even more, 20, kilo, 20 kilos, so over 40 pounds, 45 pounds around there. And Milo is carrying that bull again, doing his same, like the whatever track he's doing, going up the hill, down the hill on those different paths. He does this until the bull is four years old. So at four years old, the bull is like full grown. It's an adult bull. I don't know how much adult bull weights, but it's a huge, like a big animal and he's able to carry it. And so the idea here is, of course, that if in the beginning he had tried to lift that full grown bull, he could have never had done it. But because he progressively was increasing the resistance with the naturally growing weight of this maturing bull, in the end, he was able to carry that bull. And so this is the story is sometimes, sometimes brought up when we talk about even the modern strength training and its principles, for example, progressive overload, which literally progressive overloading literally means that you are over time gradually increasing the weight that you are utilizing in different exercises, whether it's squatting or deadlifting, could be pressing, could be bicep curl, any kind of weightlifting exercise that you're doing, even in like Olympic lifting that you're doing, you would gradually over time, like maybe every week or every month, just incrementally increase the weight. And this way, of course, you are building yourself up also gradually and you're al allowing your body to fully adapt during that process. Now, this makes, of course, sense. And, but I used to think that this is quite a very, uh, let's say like an obvious and like a literal take on the story and on the principles that are in that story of Milo of Croton because there's so much, you know, there's a very like metaphorical way of also uh, looking at the story and not just thinking about the amount of weight that you're lifting. But for me personally, what I realized just on recent times, I realized that there's a far more obvious way to look at the story and most people, almost everyone is missing this part from the story, but it has a great teaching, a great lesson to it that people are not seeing, seeing about training one's own body, about developing a human strength in one's own body. And what is the fact, uh, what is this uh, underlying thing that we are not seeing, that is just obvious to our, our eyes? It's not that he was uh, lifting something or, or lifting something that was gradually increasing, it's the way he was lifting it. And it says in the story he was carrying it. So he was picking it up, he, it, was not, it was not a deadlift, it was not a it was not a squatting, squatting pattern or pressing pattern. 
it was not a rowing pattern, it was carrying. I don't know, like that's the thing, you know, how do you carry a bull, especially if it's a mythical story in general, but most likely somewhere in his shoulders he was carrying the bull. Maybe sometimes here in the front, like this way. In different ways, I would assume. So why is this important? The carrying, when I start to look more and more into ancient training methods, I start to do the Iron King method training that we have. So not just, it was old school bodybuilding, it's strongman training, and then also these ancient training methods, which I actually learned only later that they were ancient training methods, such, such as the sandbag carry and, and stone carry and stuff like that. And I also started to read these uh, historical records, of, for example, from Galen of Bergamon, uh, who used to live in the ancient Greek Roman times. And he had like written about the actual training methods that the athletes and uh, wrestlers, for example, of that time utilized. And it's, we, it's not only that it, it's, like I would say that it, it's not a coincidence that the story of Milo contained him carrying the bull. It's not a coincidence because we know through the records and writings, for example, of Galen of Bergamon, that carrying things, carrying objects, heavy objects, carrying burdens, it was an actual way of training. So the story of uh, Milo is a myth. It's a mythical story. It's like a legendary story. It's probably not even true. But the actual method of carrying heavy objects is true. And I think this is what the story re reflects on. People were carrying heavy burdens and they were building up and developing their strength through that way. So I have used, for example, lately this, uh, or for the past, like over a year, this kind of sandbag. So round, round sandbag, there are different type of sandbags, like this over here as well. You can have also like more longer type of sandbags, different type of sandbags that you can utilize. Of course, there are stones as well. But if I think about, for example, the, the bull in the story, it's like a more, it's a living animal. So maybe it's a little bit uncomfortable, but it's a soft, it's like a soft tissue. And I think that's one of the great things about sandbags, for example, opposed to stone that stones or opposed to, not even to stones, but to barbells and weights in general. You know, if you're trying to carry a barbell here, it will like quite heavy, like press the hard iron into somewhere, like on one, okay, uh, one specific spot in your body, maybe in a trap, trapezius or something, is not the most convenient even to carry for a long period of time. So this one, it's very, not easy, but it's fairly comfortable because it molds into your body. And now I get a good resistance in many different positions that I'm actually holding it. But the bigger really, the, the lesson here is also looking at not just that he was carrying things. The other part here, which can be difficult to find details because I could not find the original text from ancient text for, from where this myth comes from. But I found some uh, writings where, for example, they really described that he was walking around the city. He was going uphill, he was going downhill. So what does that also tell us? It tells us something that is that he wasn't just lifting it up, carrying 10 meters and stopping his training. You know, he was really like maybe hundreds of meters, most likely, because for example, the story continues the actual myth that in the end of that four year period where he had been carrying the bull, he went to the Olympia Stadium and he walked like around some, uh, I don't know, I guess some temple in that Olympic area. So that has to be maybe 100 to 200 meters at least. So he was carrying that bull or that back for a very like longer periods of time. So we go from just pure strength into actually strength endurance, which I've been also talking about in other videos uh, in, in more detail because this is a lot of people think, you know, for your performance, whatever you're doing and gaining ultimate strength, you just need to lift the heavy uh, block of weight couple of times and there's your strength but this is nowhere near enough like the ultimate strength of a human that human can have you need to have the capacity to actually uh, sustain your strength to, to really produce that for a long period of time and the Milo was a wrestler he was a wrestling champion multiple times champion and I'm not saying that nowadays for example there's no training where people wouldn't lift there are strongmen are still you know they have the tradition of atlas stones and lifting them and you can see like crossfitters are running with their back, for example, this way, or running around. And I've seen some other people also carrying sandbags in the nature. So it's not like it doesn't exist, but it's not a training method that would be promoted in the mainstream as a way of training to really universally get strong. 
And this is what I really want to message to you with this video, that this is a universal, a very fundamental way of actually building strength in your body by carrying heavy objects for prolonged periods of time. And there are different ways that that builds up the body. Firstly, holding on to the back uh, alone by itself is a workout. Just holding it here, maybe in here also, you need to utilize actually the shoulder, even the serratus, even if you keep it on your shoulder, but any kind of uh, grabbing or grip here in front of your body, this requires actually active strength from your fingers, from your forearms, sometimes even your chest, sometimes even your biceps, depends on how like uh, tightly you grab the back, but you have to actively utilize your upper body and your limbs to really hold it here. And that is also already great workout just holding here. But going on to the fact that you have to carry this back for a prolonged period of time, like long, longer periods of time, it really develops your postural strength. And I will say also structural strength. So strength where you're able to really maintain this kind of upright, strong body position. And the more you, like the longer you hold it, the more deeper that stimulus also goes. The deeper into your muscles, into your erector spina, even into your abdominals, into your deep abdominals, your transverse abdominis, into your forearm region, in the chest region, all that goes. So you can imagine just walking without the weight. So when, you, when you're walking or even running with the weight, every single muscle that would work in a normal running, the effects of contraction of that muscle will be amplified. So all muscles will work more. Holding here also, you must understand that the weight is, for example, in the, goes off the center of my body. So when it's off the center of my body, there's a pull that's trying to pull me down. So in order to be here, I can even touch my hamstrings. There is a certain level of contraction there because if they're not contracted, I will start to fold over. So it's the, it's the whole posture chain that's actually holding me here. And when you're walking, you're also creating these micro disturbances where your core has to uh, compensate obliques have to sometimes work from side to side and there are different ways like I said you can also carry it here where you working different sides of the body you can carry it this way where you're working again differently your body and then you have all those different grips you can even carry like this way utilizing more the arms so this will train a very a gritty form of endurance in your body simply carry, carrying objects around. And it's, you could say, you know, in a way it's, like I said, the Milo, maybe, you know, if, if there's any truth to his story, like he just could intuitively tell, you know, there's a way to, to build his body by lifting something that is heavy and something that gets heavier as the time moves on. Like, it's a kind of an intuitive, and you could say, and because of the intuitive, it's, it's more of an archaic way of training a body. But it's a very, very useful way. And this, even nowadays, you can see wrestlers are carrying themselves. They are training with sandbags and they are carrying like the, like, so I have another wrestler here. I'm, I'm going to lift the guy into the, like, uh, what is this, uh, the fireman carry or they carry in the shoulder. Sometimes they're carrying here on the waist, like this way. So wrestlers were, for example, one of the toughest athletes and the most athletic persons who are out there are utilizing this type of carrying methods. And some of these methods also carrying the partner are described in this text from historical text from Galen of Bergamon. So these are historical methods. They were methods on that time. They have also carried this time in certain more like a narrow uh, communities or athletic communities where people are still like doing these methods. And as I said, strongman people and you know, crossfitters definitely do some of this kind of lifts. But I'd like to really people to understand that this is method, you know, look at the story of the mill of Corda. don't just look at, okay, and, and, you know, apply that into your regular weightlifting. There's nothing wrong with the, your traditional weightlifts, but look at the actual story. Look at what he was doing. He was carrying stuff. He was carrying those for a long period of time. That's a real method of developing really humongous strength is what, why we utilize in the sandbag in the arguing method uh, in many, many ways, not just in carrying, but of course, different type of squats, even rows, and all the different gripping methods, utilizing 
all of those really take everything out of this bag. The bag is a very fantastic tool and from its, let's say, archaic origin, you can also take the training with the bag to a more sophisticated level, utilize a much more versatility, much more, for more variety with it. But it's a highly, highly transferable tool when it comes to the sport, your functional strength in almost, you know, many, many, many different areas of physical activities, you can find benefits when you're training with this. The massive endurance and strength that you can gain with it. So this was now the story of the Mill of Croton and uh, the lessons that you can learn from it by really looking at it in a very, very literal manner. There is a way, as I mentioned in the beginning, to look at it in a meta metaphorical way, which also has great lessons to it. And I will leave this to another video where I will teach you about that. But for now, I hope you're gonna try this sandbag carry.